Hey guys, welcome back. This will be part three in the video series about making the tracer attachment for my Logan 10 inch lathe. I'm gonna to try to get it finished up in this video, so we're getting straight away with what we need to build. I've got two chunks of bar stock here that I've cut to the same length, and these are going to be the pads that bolt up to the back of the bed of the lathe. And because that's just a casting, not perfectly flat, the first thing I'm gonna do is mill out a portion of the middle just so that these will sit more flush and securely up against the bed. So I'm just going to touch off and then take about 20 thousandths or so So let me get the other one milled off camera and then we'll move on. Now we're over at the drill press. I just scribed and center punched a couple of holes and we'll drill these out. This is where the bolts will go to mount it to the back of the lathe. I've got you in here behind the lathe now and I'm going to start mounting the pads that we made. I've got my first hole marked out, so I'm just going to drill and tap these holes one at a time. You can see how if we wouldn't have milled out this section, the middle section of the pad, how it doesn't sit flush and it rocks on here. But on this direction, it's nice and sturdy. So we'll put one here and then one farther down this direction. I just used a long straight edge down the length of the bed with a level on top of it to level this guy out. So now I'm going to mark the other hole and do the same thing. Okay, I've got all the holes drilled and tapped now and both of the plates mounted up. So now it's time to cut some of the square tubing that will come out and then upwards. I found some one inch square by eighth inch wall stainless tubing and got some 45s cut on here, so I'm just going to tack them and then weld them together here at 90 degrees.
So I've got these two fully welded up now, all the way around. And our pads, I just hit with a flap disc on an angle grinder just to clean all the scale off of them. So it'd be easier to weld. And I don't know if you can see, but I scribed on there some layout lines for where this will sit on here when I weld it. So I'm gonna use those to line it up as best I can, tack one corner, and then I'll use just a combination square to square up the tubing. Should be able to twist it into place and then tack the other four corners. What I want to do is cut the excess height off of these upright portions. So I want this shaft to ride just uh, above the surface of this crossbar. So I'm just going to measure and cut. This one's about an inch and a half plus the 3 8 shaft. So 1 and 7 8 will cut off of this upright. And then I'll slide this down, measure and mark and cut off uh, what we need to off of that upright as well. I'm also going to cut this off at an inch and a half of overhang, which is about what that side is. So let me get those cut and then we will come back. I hope you can see the bubble on the level here. It's basically perfectly centered between the two main red lines. So I'm just gonna use a file on these uprights and hit them a little bit at a time to adjust this thing to match how it was level here. So we're just a few thousands off. I'm gonna hit this upright just a little bit with a file and keep checking it until I get this to match. So then we'll be ready to tack weld this on in a bunch of places before we pull it off and then go finish weld it at the bench. I think I finally have it all set up now to test this thing out. The bracket's bolted up to the back of the lathe. That's nice and rigid, and I made a quick pattern out of some scrap steel I had laying around. It was only 3 16 thick, which is why you see the spacer back there underneath it to bring it up to match the center line of the extended cylinder rod. I'm still kicking around a few ideas on how I want to clamp patterns to there, so for right now I'm just using C-clamps. The original carriage is slid down all the way out of the way. This one's fully put together. I will say that I thought parts from one 10 inch Logan lathe would fit no problem onto another, but I had some trouble with the alignment of the half nuts on the lead screw for this carriage. I'll put a picture of what I had to do. The half nuts were too close to the operator in alignment with the lead screw, so I super glued a couple of washers onto the back of the holder for the half nuts, and that pushed them into better alignment on the lead screw. We've got a few PSI going to the air cylinder, so as soon as I pull it backwards, it's pushing itself forwards. The way the regulator works, it won't let it have more pressure than what it's set to. So as soon as there's backwards force from the pattern, it bleeds off the excess pressure. So it should maintain a nice constant pressure as it feeds along here on the pattern. For a tool bit, we just have a High speed steel, ground with a nice radius on it. And we're going to start out with Delrin, nice and soft, we'll test it out and then move up to something a little more solid. Let me get you moved in closer for a better shot and then we'll start going.
It seems to be working pretty well with this Dalrin. I still need some practice setting up the pattern. If you have a half inch of variance from your low spot to your high spot, and you're only using one inch diameter material, you're gonna get real skinny right here before you start to clean up out here. So I still need some practice on setting them up, but just as a first trial, it's working pretty well. A couple of other things I should have noted earlier, the compound is set to straight into the work, and that's what I'm using to put a cut on for each pass. So I'll do a pass, manually lift this out, use the hand wheel and bring it back to the start, advance the compound about 15, 20 thousandths, and then do another pass. Also, this thing obviously won't do more than a 45 degree angle. If there's more force pushing this rod sideways than there is backwards, it's going to bind and jam and cause trouble. Some ways you could get around that would be if you have a large round shaped pattern, you could start from the high point and work in two different directions down the slope each side. That would work just fine. Let me do a few more passes and see how close we can get to cleaning this up. I think that's a pretty successful first test of the tracer attachment. We're going to stop here with the Delrin, starting to get some chatter because of how thin it is in here. But overall I think it worked pretty well. Let's give it a try with some aluminum. It's working pretty well on the aluminum too. We're pretty close to cleaning up right here. The only changes I made was I had to turn the air pressure on the cylinder up from 3 PSI with the Delrin and now we're at about 7 PSI. And if you can tell I tilted the pattern a little bit forward just to keep this smallest diameter wider in order for us to clean up out here. So I just adjusted the pattern a little bit in this direction in order to change the ratio of those two. But a couple more passes and we should be cleaned up. I'm really happy, maybe even a little bit surprised, at how well that worked. I would call that a successful first couple of tests with a homemade tracer attachment. There is one modification that I want to make before I test it out on steel. I know that I'm going to have to turn up the air pressure on the cylinder even higher. So I want to replace this mild steel extended rod with something more rigid. Something that will flex less side to side as it rides up and down the profile of the pattern. I'm also deciding if I want to transfer this setup into the normal carriage that I use every day. It was nice to have this extra one that I could experiment and try this out with, but it definitely isn't necessary. We didn't make any irreversible changes or damage this in any way that would prevent it from being used in its original configuration. And in the time that it takes me to get this all bolted up and put together on the lathe, it would be just as easy to swap out this rod with the original lead screw and half nut and unscrew the cylinder adapter and put the hand wheel back on. 
So it's definitely something you could do with your home lathe, even if you don't have a spare carriage. I'm excited to try this out and use it on some other ideas that I have. You'll definitely see it being used in some more upcoming videos. If anyone has any ideas or suggestions to make improvements to this, leave me some feedback in the comments. I appreciate everybody who followed along on this project. Thanks a lot for watching.